this is a continuation of 4.3. Um, there was just one section I wanted to make sure you understood completely, and that is how you approach a horizontal asymptote. Um, you can approach a horizontal asymptote from above or from below, and all you would do is plug in some values as you approach infinity to see whether you're above or below this asymptote. Now remember that you can never cross a vertical asymptote, but you can cross a horizontal or oblique asymptote for finite values of x. Why can't you cross a vertical asymptote? Because a function is not defined there. It's not in the domain of the function where you have something that makes it zero in the denominator, for instance. Okay, so you could have something like this. It comes up and then it comes back down and approaches a horizontal asymptote as you approach infinity. Something like this, it stays under on both ends. Um, you can have an oblique that sits nicely between some vertical asymptote here and, and your oblique. Or you can have an oblique that comes down and actually crosses and then approaches it farther down. Okay, so just make note that that is a possibility and that you do need to, uh, to check that. So what I wanted to do for you is I want to do this um, complete analysis of a rational function for curve sketching. And we're going to talk about all the things that you need to find in order to, to take the derivative uh, find your critical values and everything else that goes with it. Okay, so here's my function. Y equals, or g at x is this over this. So the first thing you need to do is to find the x-intercepts. So for x-intercept, we're going to set g at x equal to 0. So if I set that equal to 0, what do I have to find here? Okay, so remember that if this is equal to zero, I'm trying to solve for the numerator. So that means that 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 is equal to zero. And I don't know what that is unless I factor it. So I'm looking for a product of 4 and a sum of 5. And I would say 4 times 1 and 4 plus 1. So 4 and 1. It's a complex trinomial, has a 2 there. So I put these over 2 and I simplify and that gives me my x's on the bottom, the other on top. You might want to check that video. So I have x plus 2 times 2x plus 1 equals 0. So therefore x intercepts are minus 2 and minus 1 half. So there's my x-intercepts. Now I want the y-intercept. For y-intercept, set x equal to 0. So if I put in a 0 here, 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 I end up with 2 thirds. Therefore, the y-intercept is 2 thirds. Okay, so I have the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts. Let's talk about horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptote, what makes the denominator 0? In this case, it is minus 3. And if you plug that back in here, you wouldn't get 0 in the numerator because we know that the factors are x plus 2 and 2x plus 1, so they're not going to divide out. So the vertical asymptote is x equals minus 3. And the horizontal asymptote, well, in this case, the degree is one more in the numerator than the denominator. So that means oblique asymptote. Okay, so oblique asymptote, I have to evaluate that by long division. So x plus 3 into 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. So hopefully you've checked that video out and you're back on track with that, especially if you haven't done advanced functions for a while. So to get 2x squared here, I need 2x. So I have 2x squared plus 6x. I subtract. Don't forget you're always subtracting. That gives me a negative x plus 2. I'll bring this down. And I need a negative 1. That gives me negative x plus 3. And I subtract and I get negative 1. So this goes into this. 2x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 3 is my remainder. And then I would state as x approaches infinity, 
minus 1 over x plus 3 approaches 0. Therefore, the oblique asymptote is y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, so we've got the oblique asymptote. That's here. This went to 0. So I've stated my x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the vertical asymptote, and now I have the oblique asymptote. Okay, so that's all I can do without taking the derivative. So now I'm going to try to find if there are any maximum or minimum values for the function. And to do that, I need to scroll back up here and take the derivative. So remember, I want to know where is the first derivative equal to zero. So the derivative, this is a rational function or a quotient. I need to use the quotient rule. So that's my ho d high. So ho d high, derivative of the top is 4x plus 5 minus high, make sure you put it in brackets because it's everything minus, and d ho, the derivative of the bottom is just 1, all over ho squared. Oh, the other thing we could have written here is that the vertical asymptote x equals minus 3, and it's going to be an odd asymptote. So that makes me, uh, reminds me that the direction is going to be opposite on either side of that asymptote. Okay, so I need to simplify the top because I certainly can't tell you what makes this equal to 0 without expanding. So I have 4x squared plus 5x plus 12x plus 15. Watch the minus, minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 2 all over this. Doesn't matter what's in the denominator really for us, does it? But you keep it there. Okay, so I have 4x squared minus 2x squared. That gives me 2x squared. And plus 5 minus 5 plus 12x. And 15 minus 2 is 13 all over x plus 3 squared. Okay, hopefully you're trying this on your own before you watch me do it, just so that you, you get some practice in. Okay, so I need to factor the numerator. So I'm going to write for critical values, set g prime x equal to 0. So the only way this can be 0 again is if the numerator is 0. So I'm going to say 2x squared plus 12x plus 13 is equal to 0. And multiplies to 26 and adds to 12, hmm, that's not going to work so well, is it? So I need to use a quadratic formula. Oh my goodness, who would have thought you would have to use that still in calculus, right? So here we go. x equals negative b, so that's negative 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And the whole shoot and match is over 2a, all of it. Don't forget that. 2 times 2. So I have minus 12 plus or minus the square root of. Ooh, I think I need to get out my calculator. This is 144, and 8 times 13 is 104, right? Okay, let's, um, I'm just going to do that quickly on the side here. 12 squared. Oh, oh I know what that is. And 8 times 13, I'm pretty sure I was right, it was 104. I just don't want to make any mistakes. And it's all over 4. And that's minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 40. Well, that's not a nice number. So obviously this wasn't going to be factorable. Okay, so I've got it down to this. So I need to find the two values that make that... Um, I did do this somewhere. It would have saved me some time if I pulled that out first. Well, I guess I'll just have to continue on here. Okay, so I'm going to use my calculator here on the side. And, um, oh, here it is. I found it. So if you do all this properly, you're going to get x is equal to minus 1.42 or x equals minus 4.58. Okay, so 
Once you have those values, you still need to show that they are maximum or minimums. These are your critical values. I'm going to write that here. Critical values. I'm going to need a second piece of paper, aren't I? Critical values are x is 1.42, minus 1.42, and minus 4.58. Okay, so I'm going to do my favorite number line trick. Um, again, you might be asked to use... Um, uh, table teach you might want to use a bit a table so we also have to put on here this time another critical value which is your vertical asymptote so minus three so I'm going to put minus three here because I have to check on both sides of minus three and I have minus four point five eight I'm going to continue that down here so we have a little more room and I have a negative one point Four, two. Okay, so if you're doing a table, a, um, a table lesson here, you'd have to have a negative infinity to minus four point five eight, minus four point five eight to minus three, minus three to minus one point four two, and minus one point four two to infinity. So you're checking one, two, three, four areas in your first derivative. I will label this g prime x. Okay, so I'm going to go to the right of minus 1.42. Um, I would probably choose zero because that would be a nice easy one to use. And I'm going to use this equation up here. So if I put in zero here, I would have uh, 13 over nine, which is all positive. So I'm gonna put a positive here and I'm gonna get up my pink because it's pretty. And I'm gonna show that that's positive slope there. Between minus 3 and minus 1.42, I would probably choose minus 2. That would be easy to calculate. So minus 2 squared is 4 um, times 2. So that's positive 8 and 13 is 21. And 12 times negative 2 is minus 24. So that's negative, right? This whole thing is going to be negative. And of course, it's still positive in the um, denominator always. So I have negative slope. Between minus 3 and minus 4.58, I'm going to choose minus 4. So again, the denominator is positive, so I need to know what's happening up here. So minus 4 times this would be minus 48. So I need to know, is this going to be greater than or less than 48? So this is negative 48. Okay, so if I put in uh, minus 4, that's 16 times 2 is 32, and 13 is 45 and this was negative 48 so this is going to be negative in here okay don't be afraid to see two negatives because remember this is about your vertical asymptote at minus 3 and to the left here so let's put in minus 5 minus 5 squared that's going to give me 50 and 13 is 63 and this is going to be minus 60 so that's positive and this is always positive so I have positive slope on this side. So that means there will be a maximum at minus 4.58. I'm going to write this here. Maximum at minus 4.58. And I need to find the y-coordinate. Don't be skimpy here. Do them all. And minus 1.42 is going to be a minimum at minus 1.42 and I need to find the y-coordinate. So remember, don't make a mistake here and plug it into the derivative and say it's zero. They're not zeros. You have to find from the original function, right? So if you go back up and plug it into, let's go down here, you have to plug it into here. So g at minus 4.58, you should get something like uh, I've got minus 13.325. And at minus 1.42, I get minus 0 0.675. Now, if you um, if your teacher allows you to use Desmos, Desmos is a great program on the internet that does curve sketching for you. I doubt very much that they would let you use this for you use Desmos on a test, but it's also a good way for you to check your solution, sorry, when you're doing this at home. 
Okay, so I've got these points. The only other thing that you could still tell me is the intervals of increase and decrease. So I'm going to show you the graph because I, I did this on my own before I did it for you. And this is 10E from your textbook as well, so you might be assigned that for homework and you can do it and then check it. So here is what the function is going to look like when you graph it. So from our information, we had the x-intercept at minus 2. So here's minus 2 here, and here's minus 1 half. I did it in half squares, 1 square for a half. The y-intercept was 2 thirds. So that's right here, two thirds. And here's my oblique asymptote, two x minus one. Remember you go to minus one and you go up two over one, that gives you your line. So I had a minimum value of minus 1.42 and minus 6.75. And my maximum is way down here. So minus 4.58 and minus 13.33. So when you state your intervals of increase and decrease, you can use that, your graph, or you can basically use here, right? It's increasing from negative infinity to minus 4.58 and from minus 1.42 to infinity. So where you have positive slow and the plus signs, those are your increasing intervals. Do not include the maximum value. So you're going to use round brackets both times and remember that this is negative infinity on this side and positive infinity over here. So I'm going to write that out here. So intervals of increase. Slide it down a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. Intervals of increase. So it's going to be from negative infinity to that maximum value. So minus 4.58. And it's increasing from this point here, right, 1.42, 1.42 to infinity. And decreasing from this maximum here. So, and also, I'm going to put that on, on the page here too. So we have decreasing from minus 4.58. So I'm going to put round brackets, minus 4.58 to 3, which is where the asymptote is, the vertical asymptote. And it's decreasing from 3 to minus 1.42. So on the left side of 3, and now we're on the right side of 3. Okay, so those are all the things that you've learned so far. Um, x and y intercepts, the asymptotes, stating the oblique, the vertical, your critical values, prove that they're critical value by method of your choice. You're going to learn another one in the next lesson, another way other than using a first derivative test. And state your max and mins, and state your increasing and decreasing intervals, and graph it. Lots of work to do. Um, there's lots of practice ones. If there's one that you're having big trouble with, let me know. I'll be happy to do it for you. Hope that helped you. Have a good day and see you in the next lesson.